This video is a quick overview of the Blue C7615 automatic timer disconnect. So what is an automatic timer disconnect? If you've never used a power timer in your vehicle before, then you essentially have two choices. You can, if this is your main battery, you can hook all your loads. So loads may be laptop charger, warning lights, two-way radio, flashlight charger, basically anything that's draw that you've added to the vehicle that's drawing power from the main battery. So you've got, uh, you can hook it up to d the battery directly, like is shown here. Uh, the downside of this is that your loads will continuously draw power off your battery until the battery is dead, uh, which means you can't start the vehicle. So how do we overcome that? Well, one, one option is to hook it up through a relay that is triggered by ignition. So when the ignition, when your key is on, then the loads will power up. And when your ignition is off, then the loads will shut off. And that works pretty well uh, if you're okay having all your loads off the moment your key turns off. Uh, but some people like to have their loads uh, still active for a time after the ignition shut off. This can also help if people are idling their vehicles just to have their computers charge or their two-way radios on. Um, so the third option is a power timer. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. So let's take the cover off this thing and take a look at it. So there's two heavy-duty snaps there. Cover comes off. You can clearly see there's a battery and a load stud. Um, in addition, there's three pins down at the bottom. One's for ground, one's for ignition, and one's for remote LED. Okay, just keep in mind if you're installing it that the remote LED is ground switched, so you'll need to apply power somewhere else. Could even get it off that battery stud if you wanted. So we come over here with our battery. Again, there's our minus, there's our plus. We're going to hook the plus up to that, and we're going to hook this up to our loads. So on the back of the timer, there are uh, dip switches in here behind this little waterproof cover. And those dip switches do various things, but uh, what they mostly do is they set the time. So what we can do is we can set a timer between 15 minutes and four hours in various increments, uh, depending on how you've got the dip switches set. So when there is 12 volts on the ignition line, then the solenoid inside here will close and the power flows normally through to the loads and the loads are all happy and doing what they do. Once you lose power to the ignition circuit, so in other words, when you turn your ignition off or your, your turn your key right off, then the timer will start timing. So be while we can set it for 15 minutes to four hours, 30 minutes is a pretty typical time. So let's just for ex this example say 30 minutes. So once the ignition power is lost, so essentially that means you've turned your key to the off position and the battery is no longer charging from the vehicle's alternator, the timer will start counting. Once it reaches zero in this example, after 30 minutes, it will cut off power to the loads. So this means that your uh, two-way radio stays on for half an hour after you turn off your ignition. Your laptop continues to charge for 30 minutes. Your flashlights continue to charge for 30 minutes or whatever you have the timer set to. So especially if you're doing short trips where normally your equipment wouldn't charge if you had it hooked to ignition, this is a great way to help everything stay charged but without uh, risking your battery's uh, charge when it's when the alternator is not running. So in addition to uh, the timing circuit, it also has a low voltage disconnect circuit in it. And once the battery reaches a certain voltage, regardless of the time that your timer is set at, then the timer will, the, the unit here will open up the solenoid and cut power to the load. So for example, if you had the timer set for four hours, but you were drawing 50 amps, your loads were drawing 50 amps, then you're going to deplete your battery's charge long before the four hours is up. 
maybe you're 20 to 30 minutes in and then the the voltage drops below um, 11.5 if it's less than 11.5 then the timer will say well I haven't reached four hours yet but the battery is below 11.5 so I'm going to open up the solenoid and cut power to the loads anyway so this is uh, our, the priority here is your starting battery so regardless of time or voltage whichever comes first it's going to cut the loads off some people hook these up and they don't hook up the ignition line they just have the timer sense the power off the battery line and you can do that with this so you can hook it up just like this so leave your ignition line just don't put any connection on that center pin and when the um, timer senses 13 or more volts for three seconds it will connect the solenoid and start feeding power to the loads then when you shut the ignition off when the voltage drops below 12.75 volts for more than 10 seconds the timer will start some people prefer this method because it's a bit easier to hook up some people prefer the ignition switch method because it can be a bit more reliable especially in multiple battery situations uh, the beauty of the blue C1 is it will do both uh, charge sense and ignition sense or just ignition sense and it will ignore the battery voltage uh, in terms of when to start the timer the low voltage disconnect is always active hope that makes sense it's a little bit different than some timers out there so um, the other thing is the blue C timer will do 120 amp continuous so uh, that is a large capacity timer most timers will do 20 to 30 amps and on some vehicles that means you have to wire in an external relay uh, because you're drawing 40 50 60 amps off the vehicle so these timers will do 120 amps continuous also this is an IP66 rated uh, device so it is um, splash proof actually uh, water jet proof so if you wanted to you could mount it under the hood in a vehicle um, though normally they're found inside vehicles uh, in addition these are very nice high torque studs here so you can put large uh, gauge wires on with proper ring terminals a lot of timers just use a little push-in wire with a small screw terminal uh, which tends to fall out if they're not done just precisely right and the wire not um, strain leave properly so this this one has a really nice big um, terminal for both the battery and the load uh, as far as the cover goes you can actually snap off the bottoms and sides of these if you want depending on where your wire comes in uh, if you need to you can get a bit more room for large uh, gauge wires by snapping those those cover tabs off They're, they don't look like it but when you snap them they do leave a nice clean line there uh, and the other thing is that this timer is covered by uh, Blue Sea's lifetime warranty which is great so there's a few other little features in the timer that I didn't go through but if you want more details you can feel free to contact us via the information on the screen if you're in Canada and if you're not in Canada you can contact bluesea.com and they have a comprehensive list of all their dealers worldwide thanks for watching please make sure you subscribe so you can see more videos like this if you have any questions post it in the comments below or contact us directly by, by a direct message and we'll respond as quick as we can. Thanks for your time.